Hi everyone, I am Camille Miller of the Natural Life Business Partnership and today we are here with Uli Iserlo from um, Big Boost Marketing. He is a veteran marketing expert and tech entrepreneur. Uli Iserlo has spent the past two decades building automated marketing systems and position that position health practitioners as the go-to expert in their community. In a world dominated by chronic disease, he advocates as an education-based marketing approach to inform prospective patients about the promise of integrative, holistic, and lifestyle functional medicine. After 10 years in the pharmaceutical industry, he founded Big Boost Marketing, an award-winning digital marketing agency serving many of today's functional medicine leaders, helping health practitioners attract, nurture, and convert more prospects into clients. In addition, he is also serving as the COO of Evolution of Medicine, guiding the company's marketing strategy and operations. A certified entreport, infusion soft, click funnel consultant, Uli Iserlo has been advising entrepreneurs and organizations for over 17 years, handling both marketing strategy and marketing technology for conferences, multi-million dollar online summits, lead generation and sales campaigns, as well as membership sites. He's on the board of nearly a dozen companies and regularly speaks on marketing, automation, and technology. He lives in Hoboken, New Jersey with his wife and French Bulldogs. Welcome to our show, Uli. So excited hey. to have you here today. Yeah, likewise. I'm super pumped to be here and um, share some of the strategies, how to attract, nurture, and clients. Uh, for your holistic health business, and there's so much to talk about, so why don't we jump right in? Yeah, well, um, the reason I asked you um, on, actually, I met Uli at a function, functional medicine, the New Vision tour um, in New York City, I don't know, last month? Last month, I think, and um, people were telling me about you and how great you were helping them in their businesses. So I said, hey, let's jump on our podcast here at the Natural Life Business Partnership. We're doing our 90 day challenge and we're trying to bring in experts outside of our own community um, just to talk about raising businesses. Now there's something that you had said right in the beginning before we turned on the camera that I wanna ask you about. And you said, um, it's one thing to be an amazing healer, but it's uh, another thing to be known as one. And yeah. I kind of wanted to start on that to say, how are you helping people get known as one? And yeah. yeah, no, exactly. So working with integrative naturopathic functional medicine uh, practitioners, I oftentimes find they're amazing practitioners and healers uh, with amazing gifts. And, but they're also at the same time frustrated that they aren't known enough for their expertise. And as a result, it's hard for them to enroll new clients. Um, patients or clients may fret over price and they can't really charge what they're worth because they're not seen as the authority and the expert. Mm -hmm. And so, as you said, I really believe that it's not enough to be a great health practitioner. You also have to be known as one. And the reason I believe that is because I know there isn't an integrative practitioner or I've ever talked to that didn't get into this to heal a lot of people and make a big difference. And right. the more known you are, the more people you reach, the more lives you touch, the more people you get to hear. And I know your audience is composed of a, a wide range of, of healers and um, practitioners, but you know, I think we all need this, um, this you know, awareness in our audience that people know exactly who we are, know what we do, and what we do can help them. Yeah, well, it's probably any small business, honestly, but yeah and believing in it because i've met just in this community you meet so many really really just amazing amazing healers nobody knows about it. it's word of mouth a lot of times which which isn't enough to grow the business the way they need it right and you know it's it's understandable um in a lot of businesses where businesses sell commodities people the consumer know exactly what it is that they're buying but when we're talking about this holistic space there's so much going on there and there's so many consumers that don't know what we're doing. So of course it's harder for us to, um, to offer our services and for people to understand what it is, what we do and why they should spend their money and their dollars here versus somewhere else. And so that is sort of the conundrum that we all face in this ecosystem that because this is relatively new, this is very different from what the mainstream media talks about. 
that's why we have to do even more education and do even more heavy lifting and you know awareness building in order to get the word out and you know we know that what we have is amazing and it works and oftentimes it works better than the alternatives but you know not enough people know about it so in working with um, said health practitioners, what do you find is working the best right now? So I, I think the one thing to appreciate as we talk about uh, what's working right now is that um, in, in the realm of when patients or consumers look for have an acute problem, they're, they're smart enough to go on Google and find it and search it. So in that realm, mm -hmm. SEO ranking, um, doing Google PPC ads, being found on a search engine is very important. So the example I always say, if, if you are a chiropractor dealing with sciatica, you know, yesterday you didn't have pain, today you have pain, so what do you do? You go on Google, you find a chiropractor in your vicinity, maybe check out if they are in network, find the website, make a phone call and schedule an appointment. So the, the path from realizing you have a problem to making the appointment and engaging with a practitioner or with a business is very short. It usually happens within a day. Now, in the realm when we're talking about maybe more chronic disease, chronic problems, uh, more lifestyle factors, it, it takes a lot longer to educate people that, hey, I should take care of this problem. Let's say somebody okay. has prediabetes, their parents have died of diabetes and they have high A1C and now they, you know, they're thinking, oh, well, it's genetics. I can't do anything. You know, what else can I do? Might as well eat the burger. And well. so for, to educate <laughs> that person on realizing that, hey, if you change your lifestyle, there's ways how you can change your health destination. It's, it's not genetics that, um, that you know, determines it's your fate. Early. It's really your lifestyle. And, and there's so many things around it, you know, around emotional healing. There, there's so many problems that can be solved by our tribe. And yet, the people that were looking at had had this chronic problem. They have stopped looking maybe two or three years ago. And so the first step is not, you know, there's not a search intent that gets them started on becoming aware of our services. It's really just awareness. They see something in their Facebook feed. They see something on your website. They are at a workshop. And it's this initial awareness that cracks open, you know, their, their awareness and their belief system, like, hey, maybe there is a chance that, you know, working with this practitioner can help. But it's really a much longer process from them discovering you to actually deciding to become your client or patient. Right. And I've seen just from my own Google searches that then something shows up on Facebook. Like, so it's all connected. Yeah. Yeah, so what needs to really happen is that there needs to be awareness initially. Uh, we have to revitalize their mind that, that resolution is possible indeed. And the first thing, it's not about selling our services, but it's really changing people's mind about what's possible. You know, if, they, if the patient, the client does not determine or decide that they want to be healthier, nothing is going to change. It doesn't actually matter what we say. It doesn't matter how valuable our services are. If our client, our, the consumer, the patient does not believe that, you know, resolution is even possible, let alone how right. that exactly happens, then um, nothing is going to change. And so I think in coaching, there is sort of like, you know, where do people start out with and where do you help them go to? Or, you know, maybe the analogy is taking people from the pain island to the pleasure island. And what does that journey look like, right? Who is exactly on this pain island? And what is Pleasure Island looking to them? Being right. really cognizant and clear about this, because once you have clarity on that, then it's a lot easier to devise what you need to show them. You know, what should they be seeing in, in their social media feed? What should you put on your website? What should be in your email sequences? So do you help decide on the whole campaign process? So through... Um, um, we've been reading and talking about a lot with sales funnels. Like what yeah. those landing pages look like? How are you creating the content to get people in there? Um, what is the strategies that you work on? Like what is the best way that you're finding? Are you using it yeah. that most people are going online and that's how you're starting that funnel? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. Um, so what we found is that we created sort of the Big Boost 360 process that's sort of a very holistic process taking um, 
anybody, you know, mostly health practitioners, um, to get through a five-step process. So first we look at getting them clarity on who, who they want to attract into their business, who they can best serve. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's really a two-way street. You know, I always liken it to dating. It's like in dating, you know, if the goal is ultimately to get married and, you know, in order to get married, you have to first start dating. How do you actually get to a first date? And, okay. you know, I would say that, you know, it's, it's two people evaluating each other. So it's not just the practitioner evaluating uh, a patient or a healer, you know, looking at a client. It's like, these are my ideal clients. It goes the other way around as well, right? The client is looking at the provider saying, is this the type of person I want to work with? Right. And so as a healer, as a practitioner, as a professional, you got to be aware of who you want to work with and then what are they looking for in a pr provider? You know, what do they want to hear? And of course, that perception is really shaped by their past history. You know, what have they experienced before they start working with you? If we're talking about sort of conventional medicine, maybe they're experience like long wait times in the waiting room. They wait longer in the wait room than actually talk to a doctor. Maybe the doctor really just quickly dispenses a diagnosis and then a prescription and that's the end of it versus right. in the holistic arena the, the diagnosis is only the starting point that's where everything starts and then you know you you come up with that game plan so i think being aware of who you're talking to and you know what they're looking for is, is sort of the key step and then we help them craft the right content that attracts an ideal client into the ecosystem and this content can live on social media, on their website, in their email marketing, in, in video. You know, it's really a holistic view of knowing exactly this is what my, this is the content that my audience cares about. You know, it's valuable to them, it's relevant to them, and it's actionable. And these three things are really important because it needs to be relevant because if it's not relevant, they're not paying attention, right? If right. you have an autoimmune condition and your practitioner told you you have to go gluten-free and you've tried it and it doesn't work, now what? Who do you turn to, right? So, you know, talking about in that instance, how do you deal with gluten, going gluten-free when you've tried it and it didn't work? That's super relevant to that person but it may not be relevant to somebody that has cognitive decline. So, you know, obviously who you're trying to attract then determines what the content needs to be. Almost like a politician is like, how do you stay on message? What are you known for? So with I, content, do you mix up the content? Are you talking about like do a blog, do a Facebook live, do email marketing? Do you, do you I think mixing up the content or get really good at one thing? No, I think ultimately it's about being everywhere, but it does not mean that as the provider, as the practitioner, that you need to be the one dealing with all of this. Right. So as a marketing technologist, I'm really big on automation and outsourcing and leveraging. Right. So, you know, imagine you're Katie Couric, you know, coming in front of the camera. Does she actually figure out where all the stuff goes, how it gets repurposed? No, right? And so right. what we Important. advocate for is, just being very clear of what you should be talking about, you know, what is on message, what's off message, and what's the flavoring. There's like maybe six categories that you keep talking about as a healer. Maybe it's about mindset. Maybe it's about, you know, if you're a gut specialist, it's about gut health. You know, maybe related to gut health would be functional medicine or integrative medicine. So you know what your approved topics are, and there's a framework for you to realize what, right. what your audience wants and what you should be talking about and then going deeper. And obviously that's informed by the audience response. So if people liking it, if they're commenting on it, then you should do more of this. So we love video as the most information rich medium. So if you can get more on video, that helps you in many arenas. You can post the video to YouTube, you can post it to Instagram, to Facebook. It can live as a video blog on your website. It can be transcribed. You can take the video off and turn it into a podcast. And so as a provider, as a healer, what's important is, you know, if, if you can become better at uh, speaking on camera, that's usually the most practical way to do it because, you know, you, you speak a lot faster than you write. And so when you go into the mode of writing blocks, um, it takes forever and you don't have forever. You have to actually heal patients or, you know, deal with clients. And so um, I would say 
fig figuring out what you're good at, what you're comfortable with, and then leveraging that, and then distributing it across all the platforms. So um, the other thing I would say in terms of content is probably we should dispense with the notion that we have to constantly be original and constantly have new stuff. You know, it's almost like, it feels like being on a hamster wheel of creating content. Right. Um, and, you know, you look at your social media and you think, wow, what do I post today? Um, I should be posting. You feel guilty because you know it's important, but you're not doing it. So I believe that just like an email autoresponder, you could create 36 pieces of good content and then just post that. And so imagine day one, you post day one content. Day two, you post day two content. Day three, day three. And that allows you to actually repurpose it across platforms, right? So today is Monday. So let's say day one content gets posted in your Facebook group. Day seven content gets posted on your Facebook business page. Day 14 content gets posted in your Instagram account. Day 21 content gets posted on your website and so forth, maybe on LinkedIn as well. And so now you use the same 36 pieces of content. You're not creating any more. And you just, every day, there's like maybe seven different pieces on seven different platforms. And then obviously tomorrow, we we'll frame shift one day over. So in your Facebook group, you're now posting the day two content. In your Facebook wow, business page, you, you post the day eight content. And again, this posting, can be then handled by an outsourced person, by a virtual okay. assistant that just schedules things into your Facebook, into your Instagram, into your YouTube, into your blog. And that way, you have new content on all platforms every day. And then on day 37, what do we do? We go back to day oh, one, right? Because who remembers what you posted six weeks ago? Probably nobody, right? So why would you constantly have to feel you have to create new content? Just do great content once, and then repurpose it. And yes, a few people may realize after two, three months that you posted this maybe before, but it's still good content. They already have forgotten about it, so it still serves them. Excellent, that, that's good. What I actually do is if I release a blog on Monday, I put it everywhere. And if Tuesday I release a podcast, I put it everywhere. And on Wednesday I might release some, so I release different things each day in the same theme, but I put it everywhere. You're saying don't yeah, do that. Well, it's, yeah. it's one approach, it's but, but you know, I think ultimately you want to be seen as everywhere and having yeah. varied content and not every piece of content resonates with everyone the same way. And maybe they are on two platforms. Maybe they are in your Facebook group and in your Facebook business page. So having the same thing in two places is maybe not as valuable as having different pieces somewhere else. Makes much sense. If you're thinking about, you know, a video, there's many other things that you could be doing, right? You could turn that video as a standalone video. So that's number one. You could turn it into a podcast, put it on YouTube, on YouTube or, or in iTunes. And then, you know, on day two, you feature, hey, my podcast came out. You could turn it into memes where quotables were taken out, right? So that could be a, a piece of content. You could, um, you know, take an audio piece and doing uh, an audiogram, which is essentially, it's essentially the audio track of a podcast along with an image that, you know, turns into an Instagram video. So you could, you know, repurpose your content that way. So there's, there's many ways to repurpose a video in different nuggets. You could obviously transcribe it and then create a video blog. And then as you're thinking about the course of the week, you can then talk about different things. Hey, my latest, podcast is out you know it's the same as, as your video hey i just published a new post on my blog hey you know you have these different memes across the week so even with a single piece of content you can repurpose it into multiple different media types to you know disseminate i'm pretty sure you know if we were taking this interview there would be probably like six to seven quotables that turn into different memes that you can use to advertise the same um you know video in your social media, but it looks different because you have different quotables. And then does the, like a quotable for an Instagram, does it link to the video? I think ultimately you want to show people that you are on different platforms. So you okay. may direct your, um, you know, your tribe, you know, maybe to your YouTube channel, then to Instagram, then back to Twitter, then back to the Facebook group. So there's different ways. And then ultimately you could always have a call to action in these 
piece of contents. So that leads people back to your website. So something mm -hmm. like, hey, if, if you like this content, um, check out our website with more interviews on X, Y, Z. And obviously what you pitch there is relevant to the video. So if they like this video, then you're not just saying generically go to our website, but we have a specific interview with this. We have a checklist on that. And so that will then help the people take the next step. Got it. So we have a question from our audience. So those of you that are listening to us um, later on in the broadcast, later on in replay, um, the members of the Natural Life Business Partnership can be live with us asking questions. So we do have a question and it's, what is a meme? Oh, okay. So um, a meme is essentially, so if you, can, you can call it a motivational quote, right? You see it on Facebook and Instagram all the time. Um, it has a background image and then it's an inspirational quote. It's, you know, there's so many things on business mindset, uh, on um, um, so many different things. And, you know, it's something, a short quote that somebody said, uh, punched up visually. So it, it turns into an image. Um, and images get more engagement across all platforms. So if you were to just paste the quote into a Facebook update, probably nobody would look at it because it's just text. But if you turn it into an image, then um, it becomes much more helpful. And there's software out there like Canva that makes it super easy to use. There's another app that I have on my iPhone. Um, it's called, um, let me just see what it's called. Um, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out in a second. Um, but essentially, it allows you to take pictures from your camera roll and then just type in some text and it create a graphic on your smartphone. Oh. And you can then just directly post that to Instagram. So it makes it super easy to create your own uh, memes. Um, you don't have to be a tech wizard. It's like if you can type on your smartphone, that's all you need. Oh, what swag? Go, yeah, Ruth, <laughs> Ruth is saying, what swag? That's the one. Thank you. All right, I'll write that down, word swag. I see my kids doing that. So very good. All right. Yeah, so, so I think, you know, the other thing to sort of realize with, um, you know, if you bring it back to dating, um, when it comes to your website, in my mind, the goal of your website is really to convert visitors into opt-ins on your mailing list. And let me explain why that's so important. So in dating, unless... You look the part, you say the right things, and you get their phone number, you're not gonna go on the first date, right? Okay, yeah. And so, same with your website visitors. You know, yes, there are a few people that come to your website and that make, make an appointment with you, but that's probably one to two percent that make a decision on that first touch point. And the question is really, what are you doing with the other 98%? Right. You know, they need probably seven to 10 more exposures, more touch points with you in order to go from a no to a yes. Okay. Oftentimes a no is, is no, is just no, not right now. It doesn't mean no forever. And so if you are persistent, if you are consistent with your content outreach, um, ultimately they may go from a no to a yes. And so it's super important that we think about the 98% that are not in a buying mode right now. They are just, you know, maybe not even aware that they have a problem. And, you know, what do we do to educate those? And so I think, number one, it's important that your website is looking um, appropriate. You know, if it was designed like it was created in 2007, they may falsely assume that you haven't updated your clinical knowledge either. You know, we know that's not true, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's the perception that they get based on the website. Number two, you know, what is it that you talk about on your website? If your entire website is talking about your services and your products, right. that's probably the wrong move. You know, that is probably relevant for the 2% that want to buy, but the 98% that are in a state of just being aware of the problem, but not aware of the solution or that you are the one, they need to be seeing something entirely different. You know, so I would say, look at your website, at your homepage and look, is anything that you have put that you have there moving people's mind towards their wallet. You know, are they thinking about money? Are they thinking about, okay, what are, is this person trying to sell me? That's probably the wrong thought that we want to embed. I think we want to lead with, hey, isn't it time to finally take care of your health or whatever else it is that you're the expert at, right? Right. And, you know, moving them towards, hey, I have this problem, you know, showing them the daily pain that they're in 
and that there are ways to get out of the pain and lead with sort of the basic steps. And, you know, I think the third part is how efficiently are you getting people on your mailing list? Because ultimately that's the vehicle that allows you to deliver touch points two, three, four, et cetera. And, you know, I have a second bite at the apple. So um, using a newsletter is probably not a good tool in 2018 and beyond. It's, okay. you know, people don't want more irrelevant newsletters and irrelevant news information that's trying to appeal to all kinds of people. What they want is actionable, valuable, uh, relevant information. So let's say if I am considering, you know, you know, my thyroid is not working very well and I have, the doctor tells me you have to go on hormone replacement therapy, maybe a lead magnet like four questions to ask before undergoing hormone replacement therapy. If I'm in that person, I will very much opt in for this because I want to know what is it that I don't know? What information do I need to ask my provider about? And so this, this is not just for, for, you know, health professional, this works in the holistic realm for anything. You know, what is the problem that people stumble with? And, you know, what's the question on their mind that you can help them with? And obviously, we're not going to cure diabetes or Alzheimer's with a single email sequence, but at least we can sort of start the first part of like helping them with that initial stumbling block that stops them from moving forward. You know, right. talk about some of the limiting beliefs um, that people may have. You know, maybe somebody has taken probiotics before and it hasn't worked and now they're wondering, well, do probiotics really work? And if you came out saying, here's the top five probiotics that really work, where you notice a difference in a few days, I would be probably inclined to opt in for this because, hey, this may be the missing piece that I may have just taken or bought the wrong supplements and um, that's what you know prevented me from getting the results. So no matter what product or service that you're selling, think about how you can create a consumer guide that helps consumers make a more informed decision. And when they're downloading this, they're Intention is probably not thinking about, hey, I want to work with this practitioner, with this provider, with this um, professional. They're just thinking, oh, let me get this information so I can take it to my general practitioner and have them implement it. But of course, they will realize that you are the true expert in this and that their general practitioner probably has no idea what you're talking about. And so that obviously then starts the relationship that they build with you. So... Do you think that every website or practitioner or whoever it is should have some downloadable free giveaway? I see that all the time now. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's really important. And there's a number of things that you could be doing, you know, as long as it's something in exchange for an email. Now, it should be easy to consume because if somebody comes to your website and doesn't know anything about you, it's not about giving them something that takes 90 minutes to consume. They want to get something that they can consume in two, three minutes. Right. And that's helpful. Okay. And so it could be checklist. It could be, you know, recipe guides. Maybe it's like, you know, you know, a smoothie guide. It could be gluten-free recipe guides. It could be a short video training. It could be an, you know, a short um, guide, a PDF guide. It could be a quiz. You know, again, people like to assess themselves and, you know, check your hormonal health. Hormonal health. People right. want to know where they stack up. And at the end, you can then say, hey, to get customized prescriptions for your specific state, enter your email and we'll send you our guide. I like so that. There's, there's ways to engage people with something that's engaging, that's entertaining. And again, let, the one thing I want to point out, when we're talking about PDFs, it's not a 20-page ebook. It's like maybe four or five pages that you should deploy that give actionable intelligence. And, you know, I feel oftentimes people use these, these resources just to educate, but I think ultimately we want to get people into a sales conversation. We want people into a phone consultation, a workshop. So I think you should offer their, you know, a free strategy or free phone call to help people figure out how to customize the information in that guide to their specific situation. And how do you feel about having a video on your website, like on that home page? Or do you think that should be like once they join your mailing list, a video gets sent to them? Yeah, I think video is super powerful because what your audience wants is actually not more information. They want 
useful insights. They want essentially your interpretation of what's important for them. If they needed information, Dr. Google will, would have already healed them. So we know that's not it. And they don't want just more information. They really want to see through your lens as a practitioner, as an expert, what do you think is the most important thing from everything that's out there? And so that's number one. So now they want these insights, but you as, as the clinician, as the healer, um, as a holistic practitioner, you want connection. You want them to get to know, like, and trust you. And so the video is the perfect bridge between both. You can deliver the insights that they want, but at the same time, they can evaluate you on camera. They see how you talk, how you think, how passionate you are. And so I, I very much believe that video is super important, not only on the home page, but I think the most neglected page on anybody's website is the thank you page after people opt in. And here's why. Okay. When people opt into email, typically the open rates are somewhere between 15 and 25%, which means that 85 to 70, 75 to 85% of the people that just opted in never see your emails. So you lost 75% of your eyeballs right off the bat in email one. So what I would say is 100% of the people that opting in are actually seeing the thank you page. So this is where you should have a video above all. It's like, hey, thank you so much for requesting the resource. It's on its way to your inbox, but while you wait, let me tell you a little bit about my practice, about my business, about um, what I do. And then you can wow. talk about your origin story. This is like you're now officially on the first date. They have opted in for something you've given them, so now it's your right to actually share a little bit about yourself, about your practice, who you work with, and giving them a sense that, hey, you're not alone. I can help you. I have social proof. I get amazing results. And I think that's the perfect place to share that with your audience. And again, I'm not saying drone on for, for 10 minutes, but you know, maybe two minutes talking about your practice. Who do you make a difference for? Who do you want to be a hero to? And you know, what are typical outcomes that you help people? And maybe allude to your origin story. Hey, I suffered from Hashimoto's and I know what you're going through and what you're going through could be addressed very quickly if you work with the right guide. And then at the end of that video, again, you pitch the next thing, right? You say, hey, over the next few days, I will be sending you a couple of emails to help you move the needle with you know, your emotional balance, with your sleep, with your gut, whatever it is. Number two, we have a Facebook group. So I would like to invite you into our Facebook group. That's where we share a lot of information. That's where we have a lot of discussion between our audience and I would love for you to be part of it. And number three, maybe you're the person that really wants to get moving right away and we've set aside some time to get on the phone and help you figure out what you need right now. So click the button below. So that video in itself gives people three ways to continue working with you. Do nothing and just get our emails, join our Facebook group, or get on the phone with us, right? For all of these are valuable for you. You've shared your origin story. And so I think that is probably the most underutilized real estate on, um, you know, any website. You know, I often find it um, heartbreaking when I see somebody has gone through the troubles of creating a guide, a quiz, a checklist, and they have sort of collected the email. And then I get to a, a, a thank you page and it says, check your email for our guide. That's it. I'm right. like, ah, yeah. not, not a very good first date. Excellent analogy too with the date. <laughs> so uh, you started off by saying there were five things um, like dating. And we talked about who your audience is, crafting your content, converting your visitors. I'm assuming the fourth was the thank you page or that might be converting. Yeah, um, so you know, once you get clear on um, who you want to attract mm -hmm. and the seventh step is clarifying what content it is that you need to create. Great. And again, content for any platform. The mm -hmm. third part is really um, attracting the right people to your website. So that means posting your content across platforms and on your website. Um, and that's maybe a mixture of um, organic social media. So somebody in, in your, on your team is posting this content, but it may also be paid, um, paid ads, you know, Facebook ads that promote the content to your audience. So if you are a brick and mortar 
um, practice or a business and you want to attract people in a 20 mile radius and you know who you'd want to attract, it may be beneficial to run Facebook ads to promote your blog post to let's say women 35 to 55 um, within a certain radius. And so that's, that's the you know, piece about getting the content out and attracting the right audience in. And then the last final steps are really nurturing um, your audience and that happens to the email autoresponder. So we talked about video already on the thank you page. We also believe that it's important to put video in emails because people yeah. generally don't like to read. If they read, they skim it. So I think the more powerful way is to put videos in each email and then people click the video watch the video again building more relationship with you and mm -hmm. then the email only contains the action step okay here's what you need to be doing to reduce emf radiation in your home here's what you need to do to initiate a gratitude practice here's what you need to do to create stronger habits whatever it is that you actually have to do put that in an email because this is the reason why consumers are not deleting emails and are binge watching because the information you have in your emails is so valuable. And yeah. I get this all the time that um, practitioners ask me, so how many emails should I be sending? And I said, well, you should maybe create a 10 day autoresponder, send them one email every day. And at the end of those 10 days, they're either a fan or they get off your mailing list, both of which are fine. You know, if somebody doesn't become a fan in 10 days and is not resonating with me, probably never going to resonate with me and that's fine. You know, so we want to, you know, be, be conscious there. And again, it, it matters. It's not the frequency of sending every day. It's really how valuable is your information. So I, I can tell from personal experience, I was on an email sequence from Russell Brunson and he sent me emails in a subject line that says day one of 21, day two of 21. I ignored him till day 19. And then I said, okay, what's this guy actually emailing me about? I read email 19. I'm like, holy cow, this is amazing. And so then I went back through the entire sequence and binge watched all the content. Yeah. And um, the reason why I didn't delete it because there seemed to be a sequence. There seemed to be a treasure trove of actionable inf information. And mm -hmm. while I didn't have time to read it at the time, I also didn't want to delete it. And so I think sequencing it together that says day one of 10, day two of 10, allows people to see this as a sequence and puts a framework around it that then makes your content more powerful. If you just send one email a week, in week two, they've already forgotten who you are. So this is why it's so important to just sequence something and nurture them along the way. And then each of these emails should enroll people into a face-to-face -face conversation because unless you are doing e-commerce unless you're selling something um, that's low price where people will make a purchase decision based on, you know, just a few videos. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, you know, enrolling patients into your practice where it's like, you know, it's, it's about health. It's like very, very important to them. They need to be on the phone with you. They need to be in a workshop. They need to feel like there's a human that they talked to before they enrolled and forked over their credit card. Right. Now, um, a question again from another member is, do you have a recommendation for an email marketing program like a constant contact or? A yeah, so initially, um, many years ago, people started out on constant contact, on um, MailChimp. Um, there were so many platforms out there. What we recommend right now is Active Campaign, which okay. is proven to be the most user-friendly, most extendable system that we've seen in our space. And we tried other platforms like GetResponse. So active campaign is very similar priced like constant contact. So you're not paying more money for it. Mm -hmm. You just get more user friendliness and uh, more capabilities. And for those people that are on MailChimp, MailChimp has kind of been a little bit late to the party. They were sort of initially just like constant contact. You opt in and then you get a certain amount of emails, but it's not easily allowing you, hey, this person opted in for this lead magnet you know, send them this email. And if they haven't gotten this email, then send them that email. And if they opted in for that, then send them this. So you can easily construct these, these um, whole choose your own marketing ad adventure. And so that's, that's sort of the, the last part. And, you know, again, the last part is really enrolling people in a face-to-face -face conversation, um, either on the phone or in a workshop so that people can see your real, that they want to do business with you and then, Actually, initiate care or um, transact with you. 
So does Zoom, does Zoom count for that? Because that's what we do. We do a national Zoom meet and greet. Yeah, that works too. I mean, ultimately, it's about just like in dating, it's about connection, about building relationships, you know, around something that they like to talk about that's interesting and relevant to them. And so I think anything that works in dating that makes sense also makes sense in marketing. That is such a good analogy. I'm going to use that forever. I'll give your kudos for that. That's yeah. Good. That and, is and, marketing. And ultimately, you know, I, I understand and, you know, from working with so many practitioners over the years, I know a lot of them don't feel necessarily comfortable with marketing or, or selling. It, it's some, not something that they experience in their training. And yet, as we said at the beginning, you can't just be a great healer. You have to be known as one. And people need to know about why your product or service is better. And so this is where building these relationships and you know getting people to connect with you, buy in, to your mission into your larger why why are we doing this why are we partnering with you know in, in your tribe why are they partnering with you you know they like the overarching mission and so i think being able to talk about this and create these relationship for people to see how you work how passionate you are is so important wow really fantastic advice today um i thank you so much for joining us i'm trying to see if anyone helped Nope, no other questions. Is there anything that we're missing that you want to tell us about before we end the podcast? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, ultimately, I always say it's like, um, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to take the first step and, and move forward. And in the 90 day challenge, you know, I love that concept very much. You know, this is exactly where um, healers have to start. It's just, you just have to take the first step. And maybe the first step is the hardest uh, because you have to work through a lot of stuff. There's a lot of belief systems that are in place, a lot of mindset things. I tried all these things, they don't work. It's like, really? Have you really tried everything? And so I think be less hard on yourself, be more mm -hmm. compassionate. Rome wasn't built in a day. And when we're talking about preeminence, this concept of being where the, your consumer decides that you are the one for them that you are the expert authority, um, that you have their best interest as, at heart, that's when you have that relationship, that takes time to build. It's a cumulative effect of saying the right things on social media, on your website, being good at you know, having an email autoresponder, being on Facebook Lives, having video out there. Maybe it's about writing a book, doing workshops. There's so many things that go into telling the world about what you do and all of this needs to happen. You know, the more people know what you do, the more people you can help. And I think the greatest strategy is not getting started. You know, you have the magic information that could help somebody down the street and they didn't get the help they needed because they didn't know you existed. Right. And so whatever you do, it doesn't have to be technologically advanced. It's just have to get started. It could be doing a workshop. It could be reaching out to um, complimentary providers in your community so that they know what you do so that they can refer people to it. It can be very decidedly low tech and just person to person. And then as you have these systems and these relationships in place, then it's maybe time to bring in a little bit more automation so that automation can do the heavy lifting. Because ultimately imagine a system where you had your 36 posts for social media and an intern, an assistant would be posting all of this. Imagine you had content on your website. Imagine you had content in your email, 10 day autoresponder. Imagine you had a few videos. Once right. you have these things in place, you don't have to do any extra work. It just, this machine keeps chugging along and all you see is like more and more people scheduling a phone consultation with you and then you take it from there, but you don't have to do all the heavy lifting and convince them why you are the one. They already decided that on their own and you know they come to you pre-educated, pre-sold on doing business you and predetermined to make the best out of this. Yeah, I love that. And that's a lot of what I tell people in the group because we only do by a group is just and do one thing. Like if you if nobody knows you even exist, you just got your business card printed go give your business card out. When I was a sales director, I used to say, get a box of a hundred and your goal this month is to give out all hundred. Just give out a hundred cards, start there. 
right? Meet one person. We just had someone, uh, actually I just posted in our Facebook group about um, who's doing one-on-ones? Who did you meet this month? Who did you just go have coffee with? Um, and just kind of getting the word out. And Yeah. No, it's all, it, and I think time management and focus is, yeah. is something that's sorely lacking. So I think everyone knows the saying, you know, work more on your business than in your business. Right. But this does not happen if you leave that to chance and move it to the end of the day. You really got to start out your day mm -hmm. with a set routine. Maybe it's meditation, journaling, whatever you do, some exercise. But then the first half hour, or the first hour, dedicated to move the needle for your business and, you know, you will find you still be able to, you know, accommodate all client inqu inquiries, you know, help your, your clients, your patients throughout the rest of the day. That half hour, that hour that you spend in the beginning of the day is not going to, you know, something that, that you're missing at the end of the day. And then when you look back at the end of the week, you see, oh, I worked three, five hours this week on my business and I can see moving the needle, but right. this never happens if you don't make it a priority and put this first in your day. You know, don't even check email, you know, don't go, don't go on social media. It's all about being inward focused and, and working on your stuff and getting the stuff done and then, you know, be open for business for the world. So love that. One of the things in our 90 day challenge is we ask um, our um, people that are doing, our participants in the challenge, to post every day the one thing that they did to move their business forward, to get closer to their goal. So every day, I just want to hear one little, it could just be a small win. I made that phone call. I did that Facebook live. I did something just yeah. to, because it takes like 90 days, one to build a habit, but two, yeah. um, what you do today reflects in your business 90 days from now. So that yeah. small move reflects later. Yeah. And somebody said once, um, you know, your business success today is really reflective of where you were a year ago, yeah. what you were doing then. So just be patient with yourself, be compassionate that Rome wasn't built in a day, but, you know, doing the work now will, you know, reap, you will reap the benefits long term. And um, the more you can do, again, we have a client um, that's running a functional medicine practice in, in Charlotte, and the only marketing thing he does, the only thing is he posts a daily Facebook Live on his page. He doesn't do anything else, doesn't yeah. do even email, and, but he builds relationship, and those videos alone are enough to fill his appointment scheduler to have, you know, six to ten phone calls a week with interested people. His practice has a six-week wait list, and, you know, you don't have to do everything. You just have to start somewhere, as you said, Camille, and, um, you know, do something. So ultimately, anybody can have ideas and intentions, but ultimately it's the implementation piece that's so important. Right. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us this morning with um, the rest of our members. I so appreciate you coming on. A wealth of information. Um, can you tell us, if people want to follow up with you, where they can learn more or get in contact with you? Yeah, I do a lot of free training for practitioners and the best way to get started and see what speaks to you specifically is go to bigboost.marketing. So that's bigboost.marketing, no.com. And we have information about, you know, getting clear on your ideal clients, you know, how to create lead magnets, how to get started with Facebook ads, marketing automation. Um, we have free webinars. So there's a lot of information out there to help you move the needle. And uh, we'd love to just help all of you out there to just get clear for or become known for your expertise. Ultimately, that's what this ecosystem needs. Um, and, you know, I want to do my part to help you. That's my way to impact the world of health by just making practitioners better marketers and bet better tell their stories. And so I'm um, super excited about this. And thank you so much, Camille, for having me on here. Um, uh, happy to, to share all this information. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And everyone is saying thank you for all the great information, all the great ideas. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it.